Hi everyone, you're welcome to the Total Education Show. School is not just about academic subjects alone. School is also about co-curricular activities. School is engagement with fun. Development of a child is 360. And that's why we have started this program, Total Education Show. Stream is here to raise kids that will identify the problems, come together as a group, and they see a way to correct the error. We normally say that we have four baskets of rice. So that four, four baskets of, of rights. Of rights. Okay. At the end of three year training in technical colleges, okay. students are competent enough to take any job. Sit down, relax, and enjoy the show. Thank you. Hello, friends. Hello, everyone at home. My name is Wumi Tolu Alalade. The anchor on the Total Education Show. Yes, Total Education Show. The show is put together and packaged by the Lagos State Ministry of Education for your co-curricular aspect of education. So you have a total and a, a valued education system even in your homes. Yes. Now, what areas will we be looking at? We're going to be looking at STEM, at STEM issues. We're going to be looking at TVET. And we'll be looking at, yes, child protection issues everything that has to do with child protection and advocacy of your children even as they are home now do you want to give me feedback yes i want to hear from you you can send in your feedbacks to me on this whatsapp number 081-26601-889 yes whatsapp messages only on 081-26601-889 yes i'm waiting and i'm looking forward to hearing from you Sit down, relax, and enjoy the show. Thank you. Good day, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Total Education Show. Today on the show, we have in the studio the Checheyera Foundation Child Advocacy Center Directors and Assistant Directors. They are here to talk to us about what they do as regards physical abuse of children, sexual abuse of children, and exploitation of children in school and also the elderly. Now, when we talk about the students and the children concerning child protection and safeguarding, we know that there are so many issues that are uh, ongoing right now, and uh, we want to bring to your notice all this aspect that has to do with what, as, a, as an adult, what are you supposed to look out for, and as a child, what are you supposed to notice when you have anyone trying to groom you. From the previous episodes with Adeni Revival, we were able to know about some different aspects of child protection, but today we'll be looking broadly and seeing case scenarios of children and adults that are like in their teens and in their twenties that have undergone or have been abused at one time or the other in their lives. We're going to see their story. They're going to share with us what they do in the Checheyara Foundation as a foundation supporting the Lagos State Ministry of Education in handling issues that has to do with child protection and safeguarding. With me today, I have Mrs. B.C. Ajaykayode. She's the Assistant Director of Checheyara Foundation Child Advocacy Center. She will be talking to us about their, particularly about their collaboration with Lagos State Ministry of Education regarding child abuse and child protection issues. Good day, madam. Good afternoon. Yeah. Thank We're you very, very happy having you here today with us. So before we begin, I would like us to hear from Mrs. Ajayi Kayode on uh, their support and collaboration with the Lagos State Ministry of Education. One of the core services we provide is prevention awareness training program for adults under which we um, uh, empower, we train all stakeholders, educators, parents um, and community leaders on the Lagos State Child Protection Policy and Mandatory Reporting Policy and the dynamics of child sexual abuse. Thank you very much. You've been doing a lot with the Lagos State Ministry of Education. Yeah. And I must say thank you for all that you've been doing. There's something you mentioned about some steps when we were discussing. 
we were talking about steps that protect children from being sexually abused. Can you shed more light on that, please? Yeah, there are basically five steps on the dynamics of child sexual abuse. These five steps are evidence-based, research-based, and globally acknowledged um, to prevent and respond to child sexual abuse. The first step is learning about the fact. What is child sexual abuse? Child sexual abuse can be contactual or non-contactual. It can be physical when you have direct access to the child, or online when you expose a child to pornography or the use of foul and profile um, languages um, to children. Another um, fact you must know that what um, who are these pedophiles? Pedophiles are not necessarily strangers. Ninety percent of people who abuse children are people known to the children and to the family who have groomed their way to earn the trust and respect of the child, who have legal, regular, and easy access to the child. On during this COVID-19 lockdown, there was an horrifying surge of cases of child sexual abuse because children are now isolated to their perpetrators. And then you should know about disclosures to this are part of the fact. A child can come and tell you directly or indirectly pretending to it happen to another child because he or she is afraid or accidentally. Then the second step you should know is that you should minimize the opportunity for abuse to occur. You don't leave children alone. Why? Not just physically. You may be there with your child. Your child is on the laptop, it's on YouTube, it's on the smartphone. Who is the child chatting with? And then you should establish body boundaries. You know, children perpetrate sexual abuse against each other. Don't just say, oh, they are playing alone in the field. Always ensure there's supervision, CCTV cameras are there, and always conduct background checks before you engage people who will have access to children. Even, that's, even as educators, not just for their um, teaching staff, non-teaching staff, the cleaners, the artisans that are coming into the, into the school compound who have contact with the children. Make sure that there is a code of conduct in place that after conducting the background checks to ascertain the safety of the children with the adults that come in contact with them. We believe at the Teacher Foundation Child Advocacy Center there is the responsibility of adults to protect children, not children to mm. protect themselves. Sure. Then the third step is um, creating opportunity to discuss about it. Oftentimes, because of our cultural and religious background, um, um, the talk of sex education, child sexual abuse is, sh is shrouded in mysteries. No, you have to demystify it. The earlier you teach children about body boundaries, their body parts, their rights, that they have a right to say no, whether an adult, another child, or another that thing was to, was to violate them, is very, very key. And then you have to believe the children. We live in a society that the best interest of the child it's often sacrificed for the reputation of adults, the community, the family, or the religious background, which is contrary to the provisions of the Lagos State Government Child Protection Policies. All this needs to be revisited when we are enlightened and we are empowered. Then the fourth step is, what are the signs? How do you know if a child has been sexually abused? Most of us are used to the, the immediate signs. Maybe the child contracted HIV, AIDS, unwanted pregnancy, bleeding, bruises, mm. lacerations. But there are long-term signs which are more destroying that transcends into adulthood. Low, um, dropping of academic risk, withdrawal, depression, drug and alcohol use, uh, use risky lifestyle, styles, um, dysfunctional uh, sexual behavior, the use of vulgar language, and defiant oppositional behavior, rebellion, and criminal tendencies. That is why you see some children joining cult gangs and the universities because they are trying to suppress the pain of being abused. Then the fifth one, which is very, very vital, the fifth step, is reacting responsibly. How do you react responsibly to disclosures of child sexual abuse? Or if you react not before it even occurs and you suspect this child is always with the father, is not happy, this 14-year-old girl lives in a one-room apartment on the same bed with a 52-year-old father, then you need to establish boundaries. You call for help, you call for professional help. You don't react vehemently, you don't contact the perpetrators, you reach out to child protection agencies. The Ministry of Education has a good plan in place under the in compliance with the Lagos State Government Child Protection Policy, which we need to adhere to. Then you need to know and that's community resources, which will mean that who are the contacts, who do you call when um, there's child sexual abuse? You can mm. call them, uh, you can report to the Quality Assurance Office of Ministry of Education. Call mm -hmm. the Chichera Foundation, 0800-800-801. Thank you very much. Actually, we have the numbers passing and flashing wow. on the screen. Thank so, you. And um, right now, we want to go on a break, and we want to check out Alexander's story, because you mentioned that some rebellious act uh, actions and some exposures that children can have to uh, abuse. Uh, we'll go on a break right now and we'll be back at the end of this. Don't go anywhere.
The Chechera Foundation is a non-profit organization that seeks to educate children and provide them with skills to protect themselves from sexual abuse and to empower adults to prevent child sexual abuse. Our vision is to create a safe childhood for every Nigerian child, free from sexual abuse and with easy access to care, information, protection and emergency intervention. Our ultimate objective is to end child sexual abuse. In this video, you will have an insight as to what some survivors have gone through. These are real stories told in the words of the survivors of child sexual abuse. Nothing has been changed and they may be disturbing to some of you. If you're a survivor, we hope that this video will encourage you and empower you. The characters in the following stories are portrayed by actors to maintain confidentiality. My name is Alexander Oderi. I am the second child in the family of six. I had a wonderful childhood. I was a loved child, being the only son. I had three wonderful sisters. I am quite close with my eldest sister. There was actually nothing I could not discuss with her. She would patiently respond to any of my questions relating to girls and sex to the best of her abilities. And I would respond to her questions relating to boys and their anatomies. I could not discuss with my mother things relating to sex and girls. My mother was quite edgy when it came to such discussions. We lived in an extended family setting. My paternal uncle had a block of four flats. He allowed his two younger brothers my father and my other uncle occupied two flats, while he and his family occupied the other two flats. My uncle had two wives, Auntie Chisom and Auntie Julie. He had to marry Auntie Julie because Auntie Chisom had no child. Of the two flats occupied by my uncle, Auntie Chisom lived in one and Auntie Julie lived in the other. My ordeal began when I was 14 years old and it lasted for about 8 months. I am not being vain. At 14, I was quite tall and handsome. Yeah, sorry, my bad. Yeah. Um, on my way back from work, I stopped by to get you a thing. Thank you, Auntie. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Yeah. At least I deserve a thank you with a hug. Auntie, I just swear. Come and give me a hug and say thank you properly. My uncle's second wife, Auntie Julie, was beginning to be extremely nice towards me. Alex is for eating. Come on. Stay kids. For eating. Nobody felt her behavior was strange. Her two children, age 9 and 11, were in the boarding school. I was really confused at her gesture. My elder sister was in the university at this point in time. I knew I could discuss these issues with her without being embarrassed. But there was no mobile telecommunication at that time. I was not ready to document this incident by writing a letter to my sister. My mother, I felt her response in handling these issues would further embarrass me because we had never discuss anything relating to sex. Six. Why oh, yeah, play play? Uh, play now. What's the problem? Okay, yes. Sorry. For for one. Hey. One day, why Auntie Julie and my mother Alex, were Alex. outside. Quickly come. She How asked me to get her bag from <laughs> her flat. <laughs> Mama, I'm with you though. Hi baby, how are you? I'm fine, ma. Want to that? I went to her house but couldn't find it. Then she left my mother under the guise that I had challenges finding her bag. Alex! Alex, have you found it? Mommy, I'm coming. Let me check She came from behind and grabbed me. Touching me intimately, I was dumbfounded. 
Then I ran out of a flat as fast as my legs could carry me. I avoided her, never allowing an opportunity for the two of us to be alone. On this particular day, there was nobody in the compound. Auntie Julie invited me to her house. She said she needed to apologize for her actions. At first, she was apologetic. She explained that my uncle's attitude towards her made her behave the way she did. She said my uncle deliberately stabbed her of sex and maltreated her. She said she is human and that she has needs that have to be met. Then she put her hand over my shoulder and begged me to help her satisfy her needs. Apparently, she was not sorry. At every opportunity, Auntie Julie would brush her hand against my penis and she would apologize, saying it was a mistake. I never trusted anyone for a long time. It affected my relationship with women. I felt Auntie Julie was a wife and a mother. She should have comported herself very well. I often wonder till date if there were any other victims before or after. After my mom suspected what was going on, she took conscious effort and ensured that I was never alone with Auntie Julie. Auntie Julie noticed this and took caution. Now that I am older, I know her attempt at explaining things to me was just to make me feel sorry for her and justify my sleeping with her when I eventually did. After her explanation, I stopped avoiding her and we were quite close again. She deliberately did this so I would let down my guard. My parents never suspected that I was going through any of these challenges. My mother was comfortable leaving me with Auntie Julie. On this particular night, I was left in care of Auntie Julie. Pending the time my father would arrive from work, immediately my mother left. Auntie Julie went into her bedroom and came out wearing a see-through negligee. She was naked underneath. I was really confused. I ran out of her flat and I had to wait outside our flat for my father. I never disclosed to my father the real reason why I was outside our flat waiting for him. Today, I want each of you to make a commitment to one action that you will take to prevent child sexual abuse. And by next week, add three more actions. Thank you so much for taking an active step towards protecting our children. back i'm sure from alexander's story you've been able to see that even boys can be abused it's not only females or girls that get that experience issues that has to do with physical abuse and all that and we have a whole lot of you out there that are going through the same experience feel free to call the numbers that you're seeing on your screen and get in touch with either the Cicerera foundation the lagos state ministry of education we have a whole lot of numbers that you can reach out to on that note i want us to look at you know, there's this phobia about court process, the court case, and everything. Parents don't want to report. Can you just uh, enlighten us on uh, whether it will be worse for a child to go to court or the sexual abuse experience? Which one is worse? Going from one child protection agency, relaying the abuse to the doctor, to the social worker, to the police can be traumatic. Here at the Chichiera Foundation, we conduct forensic interview, which is a digital recording of the structural process of eliciting evidential information from the child in an age-appropriate and, um, and developmentally sensitive manner. So instead of tossing the child up and down, the video recording is taken to the police station, to the courts, to facilitate investigation and prosecution. Thank you so much. I mean, we can see that you don't have to uh, go through any rigor alone. No, no, All no. the process you have, no, no. people supporting you, yeah. and even the child is protected from, you know, the experience and the trauma that comes yeah, with yeah. being exposed to such processes. Yeah. Uh, the Alexander story has opened our eyes to see some aspect of how close relatives can uh, actually abuse or physical, sexually abuse and physically abuse a child, even with the parents being part of the process 
you know, as, they groom, as they've been groomed along with the child. I want us to watch just this short clip as we go on on the show. such an interesting show learning more about child protection issues as regards our children as they are home right now and on the last note I want to ask uh, the discussant to talk to us about the the way parents at times or even the society blame the child that has been abused as if that child is the one responsible for attracting an abuser to violate him or her. The child should not be blamed at all because we are dealing with people that are under 18 years of age. Like I said, it's the responsibility of adults to protect children. And there's no way a child can give his or her consent to a sexual activity because he's not yet mentally developed for that. So let's stop shaming, let's stop blaming them. Let's stop the stigma. Let, some even blame me. Why didn't you tell me on time? Even for adults, it's traumatic reliving the experience of sexual violence. How much more of a child? Please, what happens is that these children are threatening their coerced into it. Let's not blame and shame them. Let's help them. Thank you very much, Mrs. Ajayi Kayode. You've been able to tell us why we should not blame the children. We should not say it's their fault or they are the ones that is attracting anyone to violate them. A child cannot give consent according to her and we should not blame the children. Uh, I want to say thank you to you once again for honoring no us on this show, on the Total Education Show. And uh, we'll surely look at another aspect with or some of your colleagues at the Chechayara Foundation for Child Protection and Advocacy. Thank you. Thank you very much. On that note, we'll say bye, bye for today's program. However, before we conclude, I would like to say thank you to the Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babaji Deolushala Sonwolu, for his support and for believing in us in the Ministry of Education and allowing us to uh, meet the needs of our students and the all, st all stakeholders of education as we are we have some of our students at home due to the pandemic. And I also want to thank the Honorable Commissioner for Education, who in our own benevolence has done so much and has influenced our team to be able to churn our programs continuously, all academically, and also in all, on these other aspects of learning that we call co-curricular and also TVET uh, particularly. Uh, I would like to say thank you to the Permanent Secretary, Lagos State Ministry of Education, the Director General Permanent Secretaries from Education District 1 to District 6 for their support for ensuring that this program continues, and as well all the directors and entire staff of the Lagos State Ministry of Education. Also, not forgetting the co-creation hub for giving us the opportunity to package and bring this program to your view. We also want to thank the, the TV channels that has given us the opportunity to hear these programs so that we can be able to have these conversations weekly and almost daily on your screen as you watch us and learn from every aspect and every focus area of the Total Education Show. On that note, I want to say bye and I remain your anchor. Mummy to Lua Bye. See you next time.